on this episode of the Ritual Misery podcast, Game of Thrones has returned. Also, Dog Collars, Mueller Report. But what about Shazam? Or have you guys heard of this thing called Brightburn? Also, we're going to talk about Star Wars. And we're finally going to deliver unto you the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 210 for Thursday, the 18th of April, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and uh, the answer is probably in the closet uh, when you're sleeping. The answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, that reminds me, dude, happy birthday from yeah. like a week ago. Yeah, that was totally uh totally a thing that happened. Yeah, so you are you are the the answer, right? Like you So you solved it? Here, or you're you're the solution? I don't here, know. Here's the thing. On my on my Facebook for a long time I had or was it my Twitter or one or the other, I had I think it was my Facebook. I had a picture of like a street painting uh of like miles per hour markers, you know, like it said ten or whatever, but it was like three of them, so it was ten, ten, ten. Okay. And I had so many people ask me what uh, what was special about ten ten ten. Uh that's and, actually one zero one zero one zero. Which is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Yes. It's uh forty two in binary. And so many people were like, What's up with the ten ten ten? I was like, You just once you know, you know. If you don't know, I'm not gonna teach you. And uh, a lot of people really got ang- like mostly family got angry at me for that. Like, you should have pictures of your family, your kids. And I was like I have the litmus test. If you ask me what the, what's on that, you probably don't deserve to be on my Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> and blocked. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, yeah, Grandma. Uh, <laughs> I, so I turned forty two. Uh, it, was, it was it was a good day. It was very busy. Um, it was a shit Saturday. I think it was a Saturday. I don't know. And the wife had to work, so I basically worked most of the day. And that was about it. So had some cupcake or no, some actual cakes, some carrot cake. Mmm, delicious. Mm. And called it a day, man. That sounds divine, dude. It it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, but that that almost paled in comparison to. I mean, birthdays are awesome and they're fun and everything. But dude, eight days later, Game, um, Game of Thrones came back. Dude, yeah. We've been waiting right about a year and a half. Or no more. A little more. It's like it's uh, 18 months, I think. More. Well, a year and a half is 18 months. Uh, 20 months. So, yeah. So, (laughs) long time. We waited a long time. Uh, But, yeah, it's back, man. Uh, Thrilled. Um, I'm not going to ask you what you thought because uh, people can just download the latest episode of Let's Talk About Thrones and find out all about it. There, there. That's a thing. It happens. Uh, now, nah, man, lots of lots of things happened. Um, I liked it. It was good. I don't want to spoil it. Really, the, this was the uh, the the happy go lucky feel good episode up until about five minutes before the episode ended. Yeah, I mean, this episode was. Th- it's basically two things fulfilled two purposes. Number one, it was, um, Hey, you remember way back in season one when, uh, we had everybody all in one place. Mm. And then immediately after that, they all scattered to the, to the four winds. Yeah. Um, uh, wouldn't it be cool to see what, what happens when we bring them all back to the same place? So they can all die in the same place. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah, th- no. So that's that's part of what this episode is. It brought people together who haven't seen each other in seven and a half seasons or more. Um, do you, people, do you watch supplementary simple supplementary material such as YouTube videos and uh, like EA Voss and things like that? Like, you know, no. I, I'll watch some official stuff. Like yeah. like after the episode airs on HBO, I'll mm-hmm. I'll catch the like behind the episode or yeah. I watch the little. Uh, uh, like the cast remembers videos that that HBO put up. Uh, I'll watch stuff like that, but I, I stay away from like I'm so allergic to spoilers. I uh, stay away from most things unless it's like official. 
So last year I went down Spoiler Road because I figured, well, it's a bunch of bullshit. No one's ever going to get it right. And I stumbled upon a series of videos that actually nailed the the overall season arcs pretty well. Like it 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 was. I mean, and, and plus the the script got leaked ahead of time, and that confirmed oh, most of the videos and shit like that. Um, this year I am being very careful so as not to spoil myself, but I am watching certain. Um, some trusted people who do review videos. So episode breakdowns, post fact. Um, and I watched a couple of those today and I noticed there's a few things that I noticed that I didn't know before. Most of it I'd kind of noticed or had an idea about such mm. as when Robert arrives in, this is total spoiler. If you're like 10 years behind, and haven't seen the first season, but when Robert arrives, in Winterfell, and he ever oh, so literally the first episode, literally the first like the s- third scene of the first episode, right? Because you got the cold open, and then you got uh, King's Landing, and then you got Winterfell. What was there King's Landing? Yeah, because uh, Winterfell, because he showed John Aaron. Sure, yeah, it's been a long time since I saw the first episode. Yeah, it has. Yeah, right. Um. Anyway, when Robert arrives at Winterfell, he hugs like four people. All four of those people died. Oh man! It's like the it hug was, of death. It was. It was like the hug of death. It was. You know, I, I, I can just say it. It's. It's a uh, uh, Rob, Catelyn, uh, 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 what's his name, Ned, and um, what's the the wild brother, the youngest brother, uh, Rickon. Rickon. Yeah. So. <laughs> But I mean, is that really a spoiler? Because like, the most recent of those happened three years ago. So I know well, I don't think well, it's okay. A spoiler. Well, not even just spoilers. But it, I mean, is that even <laughs> an indication? Because he could have hugged four random people and had a ninety percent chance of being right that they're he, not alive in season eight. He didn't hug anyone else though. Only those four people. Right. Yeah. I know. I'm just saying he probably could have hugged another half dozen people and they would have died too. Yeah. Well, either way, it was an interesting fact. Yeah. I mean, um, sure. <laughs> it's, well, season five wasn't even written when they when they uh, filmed episode one. So, yeah. And this is the second episode one, by the way, because they had already done a pilot that wasn't very successful and they'd watched under. Anyway, yeah. Game of Thrones is back. Recast. Yeah. Well, there were quite a few people that, re- that were recast. Yeah. Catalan. Um, that's the only two I remember is Daenerys and Catalan. Uh, um, but yeah, so so the, all the, the the reunions took up the bulk of the show. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of plot moving forward, um, but the other thing, I mean, it was mostly just setup, mm-hmm. like establishing relationships and like like setting up conflict and uh, like moving the pieces on the board is basically what it is. It's not much happened in the way of action. It was a traditional first episode of a season. Yep. Not necessarily yep. an episode of Game of Thrones, but in normal TV shows, the first episode kind of sets the stage and gives you the players, and that's what this one did. Yeah. So I'm super interested to see when, uh, if <laughs> and when George R. R. Martin releases Winds of Winter, and then um, hopefully after that, uh, oh, crap. What is the... the What's the seventh one supposed to be called? Like uh, uh, Hopes for Spring or some shit like that? Uh, just to see how different it is. Because a lot of the setup to get to this point in the books, uh, I mean, obviously the show has surpassed the books, mm. but the, the setup that was presented to us in the books could not happen the way that it happens in the show. So, like, right. for example... Well, they're, like they're, the, they're main characters that are not in the right place to continue on to this show. Well, yeah, to include uh, the revelation that was presented to John by Sam, that's a different person in the book. Like, yeah. who John was revealed to be is a different person. It is not John who is that person. <laughs> so it, that changes 100% the story hmm. if it's the person, right? So the books are going to go dramatically different or... I don't, I, yeah, I don't. I honestly think he's, without saying so, he's been waiting until the TV show is concluded to release the next book. So I think the next book will come out uh, late this summer or early, like before Christmas. It'll come out before Christmas this year. I, 
I yeah, I can't disagree. I I think that's probably correct. I, I uh, think I think the book comes out right about the same time as the DVDs of this season come out. So because to put it, it in context, the, pretty much the last thing in the canon books, like the the actual Song of Ice and Fire books, was um, John being stabbed at the wall. Mm-hmm. That's like the last thing we see. Yep. Um, so anyway, so that's uh, Game of Thrones and, is awesome, and that is the closer of season five. Yeah. So uh, we've lost probably half of our audience because we're talking about Game of Thrones. Um, but uh, we're not really going to spoil anything else uh, if, we, if we spoiled anything at all. Uh, what's up with dog collars, man? Like uh, we, we were talking in the pre-show about not kink shaming. So I don't want to like be too uh, I, with my questions here about dog collars. I have two confessions to make. And I'm not proud about either one. <laughs> Again, no, no shame, no judgment here. I've been trying different collars for Kai. Because he's 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 rowdy when he goes on walks and shit like that. He's he's a German Shepherd with a lot of energy and is is not one to mind his master very well when he feels that he has some uh, leash to run on, if you will. Mm-hmm. So I got a uh, I forget what it's called, but it's basically a, a collar that has a loop around it where in as he pulls it kind of tightens up around his neck. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like um, a, I think it's called a choke collar. No, this is this is a special type of choke collar. It's like a some British name or something, like a Belleville or some shit. Um, so that's his normal collar now. That's what that's what he's just wearing because it's nice and it's thick and you know. But it had some effect on his attitude while walking, but not a lot. Mm-hmm. So then I went and got a training collar. Do you know what these are? Uh, refresh my memory. It is a chain collar. But instead of chain links, it actually has little spikes on the inside. The rest yes. against okay. his neck. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I had that for a dog once upon a time. I yeah. tell you what, that changed his whole attitude. <laughs> yeah. Um. And now that I've used that a few times walking him, he is a completely different dog to walk. It's amazing. It, he's so under control and everything else. And now that he's finally figured out, hey, if I'm if I'm right here then those things don't poke me. It, it, it's basically working exactly as designed to work. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't like using uh, uh, ill effects on animals to train them or control them, but none of the other things that I was trying was working. All the positive reinforcement I was trying wasn't working, and this worked within 10 minutes of putting it on them, and it's been working since. Yeah, well, and the beautiful thing about it is that since it is working, he doesn't have any ill effects mm-hmm. from it. There, there is no negative. Yeah. The the uh, worst thing that happened was the other day I took, I took him out to get Autumn from the school bus and some of the other kids were walking by and he would lunge for them and bark and then so it would be like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> <laughs> and he did that like three times and finally he was like, fuck it, those kids aren't worth it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay, oh. so the other thing, uh, and this one is the, the more shameful of the two, although I feel fairly comfortable about it. I got a uh, a electronic training collar, as in a shot collar. Yep. I did yep. a lot of research, and I found the ones that were the best brands, the most controlled, blah, 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 blah. And the one that I got him, before I ever used it on him, I used it on myself be, uh, on the highest setting because I wanted to know what I was putting my dog through, and I won't let anybody right, else right, use it. Would. Yeah, I won't let anybody else use it until they do the same, and no one's taking me up on the challenge yet. So, yeah. Um. I keep it on the lowest setting, so it's got vibration, tone, and then static, as they call it, which is just another way of saying, you know, tase. Uh, yeah. But I keep it on the lowest setting, and that lowest setting is enough to keep him from doing anything. Like, I walk outside with him now, and he doesn't go in the road, he doesn't go to the neighbor's yard, and he, I've only zapped him, like, four times. And, like, dogs were walking by today, and he was just sitting in the yard watching them. That's pretty good. So we got we got the same thing for our dogs. And we haven't used it in quite a while uh, because we pretty much had the same policy. Like you can't shock the dogs unless you shock yourself. Mm -hmm. And Steph and I are both big chicken shits and have not shocked ourselves yet. Oh my God. So we haven't shocked the dogs. You can't do it in Uh, good conscience then. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So we've used the sound, you know, like the, the annoying beep sound, Mm -hmm. the uh, vibration uh, different things. And we found with those, 
no matter what setting we put it on, well, except for shock, of course, uh, because we haven't done it yet. Uh, it's effective like the first three times. It works perfectly. Yeah. It's, but then they're like, oh, oh, it's just that sound. It's fine. Oh. They'll continue to bark at the neighbors or whatever it was they were doing. See, in my research, I found this this little thing that someone mentioned, and they said, uh, use the, vi- the br- vibration as a warning. Mm. So always vibrate before you zap them. And instead of using the, the tone as a bad thing, use it as a way to call them sim- uh, similarly to whistling. Oh, okay. So when I, when I hit it, he comes to me and I give him a treat. So now anytime I hit the little call, you know, it's basically a call button. Like no matter where he is, I hit the little button. He turns around and bolts straight towards me and wants a treat. Wow. That's genius. Yeah. And then if he's, if he's in an area where he shouldn't be, like the fire pit or whatever, I'll do the little vibration. And the first couple of times I'd do the vibration and then he wouldn't listen to it and I'd, I'd hit him real quick. And uh, he stopped doing that. Now I just see the vibration and he's like, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so. Wow. And it's there, like if 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 he starts bolting out of the yard or whatever, it's got like a four hundred yard range on it. So it's there, and I know that it it will stop him from doing whatever it is he thinks he wants to do. If I right. need it to, right. you know, if he starts charging towards a kid, um, I'll zap the shit out of him. I don't I don't have any qualms. Oh sure, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. All bets are off there. If, yeah, if someone's safety is it. But yeah. it hasn't it hasn't escalated. I've never used it higher than three. I think was the highest I needed to, and that was it was yeah. wasn't sitting right on his neck. So I adjusted it and went back to one. Um, but yeah, it, it, I felt bad because like, well, I'm getting a shot collar for my dog, you know? Um, mm-hmm. but I gotta tell you, dude, in the last two weeks, he is a completely different fucking dog. Completely okay. different. It's, it's amazing. And I, now it's more like a, the passive thing where I don't have to use it. He just knows that I can. So now he doesn't fuck around. Yeah. See, and I think in addition, so you kind of inspired my, my thought processes here. So like where you know, like the sound makes him come and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think like if you, if you associate a command, a verbal command with each of those, you know, a sound or a vibration or a shock, uh, that eventually you could just get rid of the caller altogether yeah. and they would just respond exactly how you want them to. Right. Com- with just verbals. And and that's that's the hope, you know. Um, yeah. Just like with the uh, with the the control collar, the training collar. Um, the hope is that he'll get so used to having it where, hey, if he tugs, it hurts. Then then I can switch him over to her, you know his normal collar, and he won't tug because he's like, well, tugging hurts, so I'm not going to do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So yeah, it's 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 sitting this early, and I wish I'd done this when I, when he was younger. It'd be easier to get him to fully understand what's going on. But, you know, now he's six months old, so he's kind of, he's almost yeah. sitting his ways already. <laughs> in, yeah. do, in dog yeah. years, he's like 90, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if that's exactly how the math works, but. Look, look I carried the one twice, all right? I made sure. <laughs> so, man, uh, I, I can't help but notice your glorious beard that's on your face. And that's because you don't have to go to work anymore in the military setting. <laughs> but you're not not working. Like you're, I you was are working. I was up at five o'clock this morning to watch the Mueller report, watch uh, uh, the Barr's uh, statement, and to prepare the Mueller report and get it ready for a show. We pushed the show. We we coordinated with the people. We got the recording. We edited it and got it pushed out, and it was released within four hours of the Mueller report. Well, it was ready for release. It still had to go through final checks, but it was ready for release within four hours. A thirty, uh, uh, yeah, thirty-minute show, ready to, for release within four hours of the report being sent to the public, and that was amazing. So, so let's back up a little bit. So we're talking about a podcast, yes, right, called Talking Feds. Talking Feds. Yeah, and, right, and so I can say is- that now because I'm credited as the as one of the producers. Right. All right. So that's okay. So that's where I was going to go next. So for people that haven't been following along, uh, you are doing podcast uh, editing, producing, client uh, consultation, uh, the whole nine. Yeah. Right. Uh, you and you are an intern for a company called Infinite Game, which right. is a an LLC run by Jenny Josephson. 
and uh, Subbrilliant LLC, which is run by Tom Merritt. Excellent. All right. So this this show, Talking Feds, mm-hmm. is it's about feds, right? So like like federal agents. Uh, no, no, no. Federal attorneys going after like no. Al Capone. Oh, no, oh, oh, no, attorneys. No. Yeah, yeah. Attorneys going after the president. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is this is this specifically so it's attorneys? Um, is, is that the the hosts of the show are attorneys? Uh, yes. Well, there's only one host, uh, Harry Lippman, and he is. I mean, he's one of the people that you. Oh, all these people that are on the show are people you see on MSNBC and Fox News and all that kind of stuff. They're all ah. like that's one of the one of the problems with getting them all coordinated is that they all have all these TV engagements to do, to talk about live shit. Um. So yeah, they they're all uh, U.S. attorneys, and not just like United States attorneys, but like uh, assistant U.S. attorneys, uh, U.S. Uh, assistant United States attorneys for like the Attorney General and shit like that. They're like high up. They've got people who worked with Obama and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and I'll have to tell you later on who we're actually trying to get on as a as a special interview it's pretty fucking amazing so put a pin in that and remember that i told you that because i really want to tell you who it is um but <laughs> so, yeah so here in a, a month or two when that episode actually comes out then you can come back on here and say like remember back in episode yeah. 210 uh that's who i was talking about yeah it may be closer to like next week but yeah oh amazing <laughs> excellent so that's that's awesome man i'm i'm glad you are finding success in the world of podcasting outside of ritual misery, because as we know, ritual misery is the greatest podcast out there with the, uh, I, I, so I have this show called the daily zeitgeist that I listen to, and they say they're the best second rate podcast. Oh, see. And I, I take, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I used to take, um, I, that used to bother me. Mm. I used to take exception to that. Right. Uh, but what I've realized is it's not we're not on this second rate podcast list. We are exactly one spot above them. We are the worst first rate podcast. <laughs> I wouldn't even say we're the worst. We're like the second worst probably. Yeah, yeah, we're we're, we're lower tier first rate. They're they're high uh the the top of the boards on the second rate. Whatever. Yeah. Fuck those guys. Um Yeah, we're we're, we're little fish in a big sea. They're just the whale in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Whales aren't fish, but yeah, exactly. That's that's where <laughs> we're going. <laughs> All right, uh, great white sharks. Uh, yeah, so that's that's been a lot of fun and been very busy. And like I said, it's been up since like five five fifteen five thirty this morning for all that stuff. And it was. It was fucking hectic, but man, we made it happen. L- like. When you're when you're doing a, a live recording, as in like you got four different people in four different places recording on different devices, shit like that, and you have to be able to roll pre-roll like things, the uh, news conference from an, a couple hours ago, and you you have to be able to play that on cue when they want you to play it, so they can talk about it immediately because everyone's got exactly thirty minutes to do the recording. That I mean, that was part of what I was doing while Jenny was trying to contact people and get everybody wrangle them all, get all the cats in the bag. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was it was wow. crazy and it was fun and it's super exciting. But holy shit, am I gonna sleep good tonight? Yeah, when when you used the word hectic earlier, uh, there's only one thing that comes to my mind w- with that word, and it's, it's getting it's getting it's getting, getting kind of hectic. hectic. It's getting <laughs> get, anyway. Uh, Slam. No, oh, that's, that's not the right sign. Anyway, oh my gosh! So, dude, have you have you heard of this movie called *Brightburn*? I have not. Oh my god! Okay, so for the audio listeners, or if you're or if you're watching us after the fact, like on YouTube or something like that, I need you to pause this recording and go watch a trailer for *Brightburn* if you've never heard of it before. Because right, anything um, beyond here is a spoiler for the trailer. Hey, hey dude, uh, I got to go real quick. Apparently, I've got a task I need to accomplish. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, hopefully, for the audio listener, hopefully, you, you've you seen this now. Um, all right. So, Bright Burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, l- let this play silently for you, Amos, and I'm going to talk about it while you're watching it. Okay. So, this movie is a Sony oh. movie. Oh. This is the one we talked about. 
I think I, I, I think I sent this to you on text, and you were like, "Yeah, dude, I already saw that." Oh no, I think I sent this to you. Now that I'm thinking about it, like two weeks ago. Um, well, no, I think you. Well, maybe you sent it to me, but I'd already seen it anyway. Ah, that's probably what it is. All right, so this movie is by Sony. All right, I want people to keep in mind that Superman movie rights are owned by Warner Brothers, mm-hmm. not this a Sony movie, subsidiary. Yeah. This movie is not a Superman movie, technically speaking, um, but it it very much looks like a Superman story. It is basically a what if, like the old Marvel uh, what if comic book series, even though Superman is DC, but we're going to stretch the analogy here for a second. This is basically what if Superman did not crash land and, and found, was found by the Kents. What if he instead crash landed in someone's backyard, basically, that that did not raise them to be the savior of humanity? And instead he becomes a fucking horror show fucking monster. Yeah, this is the anti-Superman story. It's beautiful. I'm I'm really excited to watch this. Dude, it's this baby, an alien baby that looks like a human that crash lands in a cornfield in Kansas. Yep found by a young couple that raises him. He discovers that he has powers like, oh, I don't know, flight, heat vision, uh, super speed. Uh, He's fond of red capes. I mean, what the hell, man? Um, But yeah, so we're going to have a link to to the trailer that Amos just watched in the show notes. Uh, but there's a couple of trailers out there. And I, if you're interested in this, if you watch the one that we link to, um, you need to watch, like you need to search for others. Cause there, there are others that I, shed some light on it. And it's just more, it, this is definitely Cal L or should we call him kill L? I am just going to say that the trailer is pretty awesome at all, but they didn't have to do all that. It's yeah. got Elizabeth Banks. I'm in. <laughs> like I don't know I don't I'm, I don't really care for I mean blondes are not my thing but I mean this is why I'm a, a, a semi immune to the powers of one each Tay Allen but Elizabeth Banks she <laughs> conquers my uh, uh, ad, ad, adverse reaction to blondes that's weird that you have an adverse reaction it's not because my first wife was blonde and that just kind of fucked all that well, up for okay me. all right point taken uh, <laughs> it's nothing to do with the is. blondes it all it has to do with the symbolism <laughs> uh if there's if, if there's ever a serial killer somewhere where i live where blondes are just ran, uh, uh, uh larger blondes are just randomly disappearing uh i'm probably the guy come look for me good lord all right <laughs> <laughs> So this movie is was not that too a real DC. for you? <laughs> the Brightburn is not a DC property, but there is a DC property uh, that I I watched the movie. Oh, it's been about a week and a half now. Um, Shazam with Chuck. Uh, yes. Um, have, have you seen Shazam? I've seen Chuck. Okay. Do you have any desire to see Shazam? Is Yvonne Strahovski in it? No, no, unfortunately, no. Speaking of blondes, <laughs> um, and, and speaking of blondes, she's the ultimate blonde. The only way that I would ever be more attracted to a blonde is if my wife made her hair blonde, and that'd be really awkward. But I like that. Yeah, um, you know, the first time my my first time encountering her was in Dexter, right? And it was like show stopping to me. I, I had to research who this person was. <laughs> like, wow. So, so Shazam. Um, yeah, who, who, yeah. Where she's not in that movie. Then, then no, I probably I'm. Not, it's uh, probably not on my list of things to watch. No, it's it's pretty good. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. I, I will say it is a a a fun departure from the typically brooding DC universe. That's currently out there um right man of steel just league etc chuck couldn't be all brooding the man he's uh he's yeah. too much fun loving guy working at the uh the buy smart or buy 
Yeah, and, and this, I mean, this is a fun-loving movie. It's, it's a family film. Um, I would caution people, though, if you want to take your kids to it, because there are some really scary parts. Um, dun, dun, dun. Also, if you're, if you're really averse to, like, your children hearing shit, uh, shit is said probably a dozen times in that movie. And I know there's other cuss words, but I can't remember what else. Um, there was a... There was like an 80s PG movie's worth of cussing in this movie. Does that make sense? Like, you know, if you watch Goonies, like all of the children in that movie say like shit and fuck like half a dozen times each. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not quite 80s PG. It's like just shy of it, though. Like there's a lot of like almost uncomfortable amount of cussing from like young people in Movie. I I assume that can that that might uh, that may dissuade a lot of people from watching, but I suppose there's really only one way to find out for sure, and that's to check in with uh, Big Voice J on how the movies are doing this week. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv, for the week of April 15, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice J, brought to you by The Shovel, a real groundbreaking invention. Let's go to the scoreboard! Teams Ritual Misery and The Vod Squad are all tied for last place, still waiting for the first film. Team Drunkage Gaming is in fourth place with $14.3 million. Team Game Night is in third place with $92.5 million. Team Movie Party is in second place with $164.9 million. And in first place, with $539.4 million, it's Team Have a Drink. That's your Stream Team Movie Draft Minute, all totals of record as of April 17th, 2019. Congratulations, Have a Drink. I'm, I'm, I'm bummed, dude. Like, it's a Movie Draft Minute, but it's only 45 seconds long. Yeah, well, you know what? I don't need a minute to tell you that Have a Drink is going to win this thing, probably, because they still have Detective Pikachu. They're well on their way to a billion dollars, and Pikachu hasn't even come out yet. Yeah. Uh, but then again, Movie Party has uh, the new Avengers movie. Um, that it's coming out next weekend, enough. right? That, uh, next weekend, yeah. Uh, oh. that, you know, that alone might be enough to just give them the victory but they've got three other movies yeah um you know what we should do we should invite sean on the podcast next week just Mm. to fuck it up to where he can't go check out the uh the midnight showing of avengers next weekend (laughs) (laughs) oh no um yeah i don't know man um movie draft is kind of sad and depressing Mm. to me right now yeah and i still don't have confirmation we don't have a movie coming out for Weeks to come. Uh, puppy love, right? Isn't that what we have? The first one. We uh, have? The dog's journey, basically the same. Yeah, that's. I mean, Fievel goes home. Whatever. I. Except this one's a chick dog, right? That's good. I'm all for diversity. Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it is a chick dog. Am I allowed I to know. say chick? Like, is that? No, the technical term is bitch. Right, but that can't be less offensive than chick. For if you're describing a dog, like saying she's a chick dog or just saying she's a bitch, I mean, I think. <laughs> Look, man, I don't know, man. That's a I'm, toss-up. I'm just a middle-aged white dude, uh, a middle-aged heterosexual white dude that just is trying not to offend anybody, man. I just don't know. I'm like, I'm, I've am i gaslit myself into thinking that things are okay. Yeah. So I need, I need people that give us your opinion. Like, let it, let us know. Uh, I, you know what? I might put up a, a Twitter poll. Yeah. Later, that you know, it, what's more offensive, chick dog or bitch? And uh, you can email us uh, podcast at ritualmisery dot com. Let us know if chick dog or bitch. Just put it right there in the subject line, chick dog <laughs> or bitch. Uh, just which one? Which one do you find uh, less offensive? We're gonna go less offensive, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we're and both it, offensive it, in some ways. Some somebody is offended by both of them. So which one is less offensive? Right. And if if we are not too offensive for your ears or we're maybe there we're just the right amount of offensive uh why don't you head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery uh show us that you give a fuck and give us a buck yeah i'm gonna I, have to tell know, me one of these days i'm gonna screw this up and say that show us that you give a buck by giving us a fuck no that's a strip club dude 
Yeah, I know. Uh, well, is it? Like maybe in Europe. The good ones it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who's our stripper this week? Oh, man. Um, but anyway, we don't do any of those things. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ritual Mystery. No, dumbass. That was a lead in. Who's our stripper this week? Uh, well, um, uh, I don't know about stripper, but uh, the patron of the week is Time Jumper three one nine. You ain't got the balls to hope he would strip for you. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, thank you, TJ. Uh, your support, as always, is very much appreciated. You know, you uh, wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to puss out of this shit. Is that offensive? Puss? Is that? I mean, it could be. I don't know. <laughs> um, Okay, but, uh, you wouldn't have to Patreon. wimp out of you, you, you wouldn't have to wimp out of this shit if you set me up better. Uh. No, well, tell tell us what. Uh, remind us what what TJ gets for his contributions. Uh, TJ is getting the stream uh, that only patrons get. He is getting access to our patrons only Discord, and he is getting updates uh, throughout the month and throughout the week from us that only go to patrons. Uh, and yeah, and that. and do not forget, he is getting the peace of mind that his measly little donation, which I think actually he's got one of our better donations, so I shouldn't say that. That's probably offensive too. <laughs> that his donation is directly contributing to the success and the fortune. I don't want to say fortune because we're not making a fortune. The success and the availability of this show and its hosts for you. So be yeah. like TJ. Go to patreon.com slash ritual misery and give a fuck, give a buck, and call it a day. Get cool shit from us. Well, it's above average shit. Above average shit. Yeah. Come get your above average shit. Patreon.com slash ritual misery. Hey, uh, Amos, play, play, play that other sounder that's like right next to that one. This week, we have Quiz of Thrones. Oh, I'm going to fail this like a bitch. Wait, right. uh, I mean... Uh, like a chick dog. I'm not good at this. You're going to fail this like a chick dog. And, and I'm going to just mention real quick, uh, this last 10 minutes has been title fodder from hell, and not a single person has submitted anything. Get in there and submit titles, damn it. Bang S. That means exclamation point, lowercase s. Space and then whatever, you, yeah, your suggested title. <laughs> uh, by the way, we're on uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific ish, uh, yeah, ish. All those are issues, uh, yeah. So, all right, dude, um, you host a show called Let's Talk About Thrones, mm -hmm. so you're supposed to be a Game of Thrones wait, expert. Wait, 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 I co host a show called Let's Talk About Thrones where mm -hmm. I am simply the production guy. That doesn't do his production job, right? Right. <laughs> uh, so, so I'm going to quiz you on Game of Thrones stuff. Okay. Uh, the the first part is going to be, in my opinion, gimmies. Okay. Well, actually, in my opinion, I think they're all gimmies. Uh, wait, but... wait, wait. Are we talking show or books or both? Show. Okay. It's very specifically the show. Okay. Then I have a chance. All right. There's a lot of crossover. I mean, uh, right. just because I say it's show. Most of this is true in the books as well. But there's things like if you ask me a question about Jane Poole, obviously I'm not going to fucking know. Yeah, or Young Griff. If I mentioned Young Griff, you'd be like, who the fuck nope. is Young Griff? But if you ask me if it's Gendry or Gendry, I know that it's Gendry. So eat it. Or Osha versus Asha. It's Osha. That's what I should have done. It's Osha. Damn it. That's what I, sh I should have said. We've, we've already. Osha or Asha? Yeah, we've already discussed all these things on the show. It's, uh, it's Osha. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Osha is is the wildling woman. Asha is what who you know as. Oh crap! I forgot her name. Yara, Yara Greyjoy. Oh. There's no such character in the books. Her name is Asha Greyjoy. Yeah, with an A, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So here we go. <laughs> this is your Quiz of Thrones. If you if you miss any of the first half of this, I'm going to be upset with you. Wait, 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 wait. We can't do this without it, the. Wait, no, no, no. It starts out. No, no, no. The song starts with. <laughs> 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 
dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, dude, every time I watch HBO and a show is about to start or I'm about to watch a movie and I hear I, that, I start, ah, I gave it through. Oh, shit. That's you want to you wanna talk some fucked up shit? I've been catching, you know what I've been watching lately? I've been watching The Wire. I've never seen The Wire. I've never watched The Wire, but everybody says it's goddamn good. The most yep. amazing show ever, except for right, Game of Thrones, right. Friends, and uh, Firefly. So I'm watching it, and I just finished season one. And every I'd be watching an episode, hit the little button to skip to the next episode. The HBO shit would come on. I'd be like, "Oh, Game of Thrones! Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> Dude, for life, for life, that's gonna be the curse. Oh my gosh! Yeah, but um, also The Wire. If you haven't seen it, just start watching. It. It's it's fucking phenomenal. It's uh, so right now Lucas and I are going through Amazon Prime's original series Jack Ryan, mm-hmm. and uh, we've got two episodes left of that. And I think The Wire might be our next one, actually. Oh, so it's, uh, it's good timing. It's really good. All right, dude. First one. Name Jon Snow's direwolf. Ghost. Okay, no. Name Rob Stark's direwolf. Rob Stark's direwolf. Um, that I don't. Oh shit! Because I I fucking hated Rob Stark in the books and in the show. I never really paid attention. Um. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'm so upset with you. You're right gonna now. say it, and I'm gonna hit poke myself in the eye, but. Yeah, uh, so get ready to poke yourself in the eye. It's Grey Wind. <laughs> okay, that one I wouldn't hey. remember. All right. Uh, name Sansa's direwolf. Lady. Name Arya Stark's direwolf. Nymeria. You, you know name, I'm going to get some Arya shit right. She's my favorite character. Yeah, name Rickon Stark's direwolf. Shaggy Dog. And finally, name Bran Stark's direwolf. Oh, no. <whistles> Two and one. <sighs> it's something oh, easy, too. Su- oh, sweet summer child. Summer. Uh, Summer is brand. I knew it was but... easy. I knew it was easy. Damn it. All right. So I have that was your first six questions. I thought they were going to be gimmies. You got four out of six. There are four more questions. Now, keep in mind, the six, the four of the six that I knew, I fucking knew right offhand. That's true. That's true. Uh, but those other two, like Rob Stark, like you could ask me what color his hair was. I know it's black and it's still going to be like, fuck, I don't care. <laughs> Who gives a shit? And, and if you've ever seen, if you've ever listened to any part of season three of uh, Let's Talk About Thrones, where we covered season three, you know I fucking hate Rob Stark. I hated him in the books. I hate him in the show. And in my happiest moment was the Red Wedding when that storyline ends. As of the beginning of Game of Thrones <laughs> season eight. Plus, it's when Arya's start- story really begins. Anyway, go ahead. Which of the Stark direwolves are still alive? Uh, Nymeria, Ghost. Let's see. Uh, Shaggy Dog is dead. Um, a summer died in, under the tree. Lady died in episode two. So, um, Nymeria and Ghost, just the two. Yeah, and, uh, don't forget that Grey Wind died. Um, with Rick on. No, no, uh, Grey, no, Grey, Grey Wind died at the twins. Yes, yes, with, with, with Rob. Past. Yeah. And so right, under Rob's um, body. I don't know. All right. The order of scholars, healers, messengers, and scientists educated at the Citadel are called what? The Maesters. Good. You put that one in there. Good. You, you just put that but, one in there to hoping that I would mispronounce it because you hate it when I mispronounce it so bad. Speaking of Maesters, <laughs> what... What genealogical relationship is Maester Aemon to Jon Snow? Um, this is according to the show, right? Because I know the, the books the are show. slightly different or possibly different. Um, Aemon is Jon Snow's... Let's see, it'd be... 
because they share. Let me get my genealogy gene, genealogy tree here. <laughs> I mean, you know what's bad is right there. I have a map of the genealogy. Um, so a family tree. Same thing, dude. Why are you why are you busting my balls? Um, we'll it's go with his balls. <laughs> we'll go see. Aemon Targaryen is Aegon Targaryen's brother. And that is Jon Snow's grandfather. So that would make Aemon Targaryen his great uncle. Okay. Um, so you're, you're most of the way there. How many greats are in front of that? Uh, I'm going to stick with my answer of just one, but I imagine it's two. But yeah, I'll, I'll take the loss for the one. <laughs> it is actually three. It's oh. great, great, great uncle. Oh, well, yeah, because he's so fucking old. Yeah. So you he was seven or something so like that. He was the, well, at least according to, um, uh, uh common show. belief, he was the, when at the, time that he died he was the oldest man in westeros hmm. which i'm pretty sure that that uh old nan was the oldest person in westeros at the time of her death it depends on how how you well we're, we're getting kind of in the weeds but it depends on how you read her story but if you take her for her literal words she was like 300 years old because of the stories that she would tell <laughs> uh aligned with or you could take it as the other possibility anyway yeah go ahead next question <laughs> all right your final question. And so when I asked you to say the word maesters, it was to make sure that you called it maesters right. uh, as a, as a ball busting move. Um, but this, this last question was inspired by the most recent episode of let's talk about Thrones where all four people on the show had the same fail. And I'm going to hope that you correct yourself right now. The, your final question. What is the name of the red-haired free folk woman fond of saying, you know nothing, Jon Snow? Yvette. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. It's not Yvette. It's... Oh, shit. Because I, I remember this as we were recording it, and I didn't get a chance to correct everybody. <laughs> Her name was Igrit. Igrit. Yes. Yes, you passed with a D minus. That's fine. Gets six out of ten. That's that, uh, that's fine. And I knew the Egret one, but I had had it fucked up my head. And I was actually remembered what we called her on the show as opposed to what her correct name was. Yeah, I, well, I think on this fi- this last episode, I think it was just Ginny fumbling for the name, and she's like, "Oh my god, what is what is her name?" And she called out the actress's name. She said, "Yeah." You know nothing, Johnson, and nobody stepped in to help her out. Well, I did, but I think I got. I think I cut that because I was interrupting it when I finally said it. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just funny because I I do this with a lot of podcasts, but especially with let's talk about Star Wars and let's talk about Thrones. Yeah. Where because I I listen to, to most of my podcasts while I'm driving, mm-hmm. like to and from work. So you're yelling at your at but, your windshield. Yes, I yes. <laughs> I, let's talk about Star Wars and let's talk about Thrones. I will yell at my at my phone like, "No, it's and, Igret." <laughs> he, he, here's here's the thing about Jenny, okay? And I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not busting her her uh, her 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 stigma here or whatever. She is amazing at understanding the emotional complexities and the character complexities, but she sucks at remembering the fine details. Right, like names, like names from four seasons ago, you right, know. Right. Like it, it, she, she nails like when she when she starts talking about the emotional capacity of people and and how they intertwine and and don't forget this scene over here and how it like, like she is amazing at that. But when it comes to like the scene with the uh, what uh, what's 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 this from season three, Dude, the, uh, I I actually I empathize like crazy with that because <clears throat> like at work. I, I like real life names. Mm-hmm. I am the same way. Like I will be, I'll be telling my boss like, uh, yeah, uh, captain's, uh, uh oh, geez. The dude uh, with the bars. Guy. All right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that's like, that's daily, multiple times daily. Mm-hmm. I really bad about that in real life. Yeah. Um, all right. That was a fun but, quiz, man. That was, that was good. 
Cool. Uh, we've only got a little bit of time left. I want to About briefly. Fifteen minutes, I guess. I, I want to briefly touch on something that uh, that happened over the last weekend. Can I guess uh, it? Can I guess it? Can I guess it? Can I guess it? Guess, guess, guess. <laughs> yes, damn it. Guess Star already. Star Wars Celebration, the release of the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker trailer, or teaser rather, not a full trailer, it's a teaser, and the uh, uh, subsequent random events that, well, I won't say random, the, the subsequent related events that happened at Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. The main thing I want to talk about is the trailer. <laughs> Let's skip the other stuff if we want. It, teaser. Uh, uh, yeah. So actually, so real quick, let me just let me just run down a few of, of a few things real quick. Okay. The Mandalorian TV series is going to be exclusive to Disney Plus. It comes out in November. I haven't seen it, but I think from all the people that I know that have similar views to Star Wars that I have, it's going to be pretty. Well, it's looking to be pretty fucking good. I, dude, I can't fucking wait. There is leaked footage. Uh, Disney slash Lucasfilm has not officially released the teaser footage, mm-hmm. uh, but it was shown to the the audience at at Star Wars Celebration. Uh, so of course, there's fucking cams. Now, when uh, does when does this happen? The video. When when in the timeline is this? Pre takes one, place, post nine, takes place or five years after Return of the Jedi. So, but, so between four and or I mean between six and seven. Yeah, but like okay. uh, like right after five or right after six, rather, it's way the fuck before seven. R- right, but I, I that's how I can yeah. scale things right. for for the, right. those commoners of us that are fans, but not necessarily right. super fans between right. six but, and seven. Right, but also like it probably doesn't matter that much because it's like it's some far flung corner of the well, galaxy, and that's the intent behind it, right? Is to expand yeah. the the universe without forwarding the story necessarily as Rogue One and well, especially Rogue oh. One. Um, but also, uh, uh, what's the other anthology movie? Solo? Solo. Solo, they added to the universe, but they kind of pushed the story forward a little bit in that they give you more details about the main Skywalker saga as opposed right. to yes. this, this Mandalorian is, is going to be kind of completely separated from the Skywalkers, presumably. Exactly. 100%. Same, yeah, same yes. timeline, but not not in the... Yeah. It's not going to be a tangent yeah, I mean, the to only, the main saga. The only saga. thing that really matters for the time setting is just the the political atmosphere of the galaxy at large. In the state it. of the force, really. In the who? The state of the force. No. What? Why would that matter? Because why why wouldn't it matter? The political because atmosphere it, is that the empire just just reason kind of fell. I mean, not necessarily all of it because it takes a while for shit to travel. Right. But but the force is on a, in a on a resurgence. It's not because it, it'd be different if it was just after episode two going into three versus episode six going into seven. I guess those are actually pretty similar to each other. But so I, I, I think anything like if we're talking about like galaxy wide storyline, whatever, outside of the Skywalker saga, I think there's really only two eras that really matter. It's pre order sixty six and post order sixty six, and this is post order sixty six. Like, I, so there's not a Jedi every fucking five feet that you walk. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, will somebody at some point in the show show up with a lightsaber? Maybe. Who knows? Uh, are Are you willing to bet that there's lightsabers before force powers, or the other way around? Not force uh, sensitivity, uh, but actual use of force powers. Yeah, I mean, because you can be force sensitive and precog a little bit, and not actively do it, but to actively use my, force or actively my, use lightsaber. So the, the the first season is eight episodes long. My guess is that there's no mention of the force or exhibition of the force in any way, shape, or form to include lightsabers. Okay. In the first season, that's my guess. I'm going to briefly interrupt you here for our live audience and tell you that um, if you don't like geeking out about Star Wars. Uh, DC, Marvel, the number 42, and pretty much any other geek shit, Game of Thrones that we've been bringing tonight, you're watching the wrong fucking show. So continue. Right. Um, I'm going to say that there is lightsabers before there's force, because okay. I think there might be a, not maybe not a functional lightsaber, but something on display or a collector's item or a reference to it, something directly related to lightsabers before you get something directly related to the force. 
Yeah. And and, you know and, and I, not only directly, but overtly. Because there could yeah. be random things that are happening that you don't know are force related until like season three. But overtly, right. I think the overt reference is going to be to lightsabers before the force. Yeah. And I think it's probably just going to be a prop that's not even really uh, yeah. mentioned because there are going to be bounty hunters in this series and bounty hunters, like there is no greater trophy than, mm-hmm. than a lightsaber. So, uh, yeah, you're probably right. I agree with you on that. Uh, but this show looks amazing. It's got Prince Oberyn of Dorne, uh, as the main character. Now, now when we're talking Prince Oberyn, are we talking pre eyes or post eyes? I mean, he's, I don't know. I mean, he's alive and well, and he's a, he's a morally ambiguous guy. I mean. So pre-eyes, got it. Sure. <laughs> uh, probably. I mean, he's wearing a helmet. and all. I don't think that any of the footage that they showed at Star Wars Celebration showed him without the helmet. Because uh, he's still so recovering from Ivan Sorgensen or whatever his name is. Uh, but also, um, and I, damn it, the actor's name is escaping me right now, but he played, um, oh shit, the character's name is escaping me right now. Uh, you watched Breaking Bad, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, what, what was the guy's name that was the, um, he ran the, the chicken restaurant and. Gus? Gus, yes. Gus Gus Freeman? Who? Isn't Gus Freeman? Uh. No, it wasn't Friedman. That sounds like a Jewish name. He had a Mexican name or a Hispanic name. Um, yeah, no, you're right. Anyway, Gus. Yeah, Gus. Uh, he's in it, and a lot of people that... It's we, good to know that he made it out of uh, New Mexico and, and started surfing the galaxy. Yeah, well, I mean... you know, anyway. If you're looking for a podcast idea, I want to I want to throw something at you that you take... Uh, a specific actor and just com- come up with a narration of their life that includes the stories that they uh, participate in and explain how they've gone from here to here to here to here uh, in-, in an interesting and fun way. I would listen. I can't guarantee that I would partake because that sounds hard. <laughs> yeah. <please don't. laughs> uh, anyway, Mandalorian looks awesome. If you are like me and you like the fringe elements of the star Wars universe, uh, like bounty hunters and smugglers and just dirty shit that doesn't have to do with Jedis or like Imperial forces or whatever. Um, this looks like the show for you. Uh, Disney plus is only going to be six ninety nine a month. Uh, and it comes out in November and it's well worth it to me just for that freaking show. And I cannot wait. Now there's some uh, ambiguity as far as what Skywalker means in the title rise, the rise of Skywalker, whether it's, Mm-hmm. Whether that becomes the new like nickname for force users, or if it's meaning the family, I mean, there's some ambiguity there. What, um, what what does the Mandalorian mean? So a Mandalorian just means a, a person from Mandalore. It means like Earthling, <laughs> like it means someone who is from Mandalore. Well, that's nowhere near as exciting as I was hoping to be. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Clone Wars season six or seven or whatever. It's been on hiatus for like four years. Clone Wars season next. Yeah, uh, Clone Wars is back and it's exciting. I can't wait. Clone Wars is one of the uh, best animated series that I've ever seen. It starts out a little bit slow, like season one, but uh, it becomes amazing. The only raw off the top of my head, the only animated anything that tops it is Avatar: The Last Airbender. Mm. Um, so good, and I cannot wait for its return. Um, now, this was already known, right? We knew that this was coming. It was just going to be yes. like a year and a half away, and people kind of like let that space out. And now that they announced it again, they're like, "Oh my god, it's really coming!" Like, no, jackasses, they told you. Well, last year. I mean, they they showed they they showed actual footage, right? Uh, from it, so it was like a, I don't know, it was like a a sizzle reel. You know, uh, is, is this showed. supposed to be the last season of this? Because they were concerned about that last time, right? You know, I think I think it is. I was. I was sure it was the the season finale, but I don't know that mm-hmm. now. I don't know for sure if it's the season finale. I think it is. Yeah. So oh, okay. so you wanted to get to the future of Star Wars. Well, that, that's what the notes say. Um, yeah. So so basically, so, it's all the things coming out. But 
I, I, what I really want to talk about, though, is the teaser trailer for The Rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. So, first I'm, of all... I'm going to tell you kinda... th- the same thing I told Jenny. To this day, I think... Uh, what's her name? The chick that plays Ray. Is it, can I say chick? Oh, my God. Uh, the Daisy woman, Ridley. Daisy Ridley, the woman who plays Ray, is the best-looking average woman I've ever seen in my life. The best looking average woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. We we're talking about scales earlier. You should understand what I mean by that. Like she's not she's not like overtly like hot, but she is she's really, really pretty for an average well, I wouldn't say for an average lady, but she's really, really pretty, but she appears more average than not. Like it's this delicate balance that she just really so you, knocks out. What are you are you saying girl next door? Like what, what yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, that that works. Not the movie kind of girl next door because that was kind of a. a tongue, oh, that was a great movie. That was yeah, a, that it. was a tongue in cheek reference to it, but yeah, um, she just looks she looks like an average woman, but she's got all the features to make her uh, very attractive without making her like over the top. Like, oh my god, she's so hot. Um, she just she's really really pretty, and it's it's nice. It, she's pretty. She's average enough that she looks like a normal person without being looking like a superstar all the time. Um, like uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson doesn't look like an average person. She looks like a fucking gorgeous model lady all the time. Um, all right. But she doesn't look average enough to just be average. Like she's this this gray area. She's really, it just it. She's yeah. Anyway, well, that nonsense. On the new Star Wars movie. <laughs> yeah, that nonsense is how I feel uh, all the time. Mm. All right. So so, <laughs> the rise of Skywalker. You um. You started to to talk about Skywalker as the t- you know as part of the title, mm-hmm. and then you transitioned to the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on the the name "The Rise of Skywalker"? What is that referring to? Well, because there's no capitalization, you don't know if it's meaning. Well, I guess since it's in the title, capitalization would be null anyway. But um, you don't know if it means the family, in which case it could mean Kylo Ren because of his lineage. Or it could mean his uh, Luke Skywalker's legacy in Ray, or it could mean Luke Skywalker's ghost, like he, he, him rising to a higher plane, which, rising from the grave. I mean, there, there could be turns that. into a zombie movie halfway through. <laughs> it's fucking. What is it Planet Z? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, or it could be that, and this is something that was brought up uh, on some video I watched somewhere that. Skywalker could be the new name that just becomes a vernacular, like Kleenex is for a tissue. Uh, Skywalker kind of becomes so the crazy. new, but like then the stand in for Jedi because the Jedi order is dead, like as a religion, like a, as a religious right. order. Right. So you can't say Jedi. So the new stand in is Skywalker. But then Skywalker is supposedly I, like the Smith of the galaxy. So like there's no, ton, tons tons of Skywalkers around. No, I don't think so. There's nothing backs that up. <laughs> there is one Skywalker family. Uh, I I kind of hate that idea. It kind of makes sense because, I mean, the rise of Skywalker, when this is the final movie in the Skywalker saga and you call it the rise of Skywalker. Yeah. So from that aspect, it makes sense that that's what it would be. But I kind of hate it. I don't want to say, hey, did you see that Skywalker? What? Yeah, no. and, th- and then you add in the imagery of the the teaser where Ray is flipping over as a TIE fighter flies underneath her, and she's got her lightsaber out, and a real Luke's yeah, lightsaber well, out. So maybe um, it's literal. The literal rise of, well, no, that would mean that Ray's a Skywalker. Right, uh, which is... Which which brings up its whole its own whole little thing. Like, yeah. what if what if Ray well, actually is? Because we still don't know the parentage of Ray. Like we right. we suspect so, something, but we don't know. Yeah. So I am convinced once again that Ray is in fact a Skywalker. I think that she is Luke's daughter. This was a theory that I had in Episode Seven. Me mm-hmm. along with like the rest of the fucking universe well, had that theory. about about half the internet. Yeah. Um, and I kind of gave up on it after episode eight because, you know, uh, your parents are nothing. They were they were drunk traitors that, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, but then that's exactly what the bad guy would say. Well, sure. But I, I didn't buy into that either. Like, it, it's not just a lie. 
All right, but I watched, I rewatched episode eight mm-hmm. in the last few days, and I paid particular attention to dialogue this time. The revelations that were given to Ray and Kylo during their, uh, we we jokingly refer to it as force timing each other, mm-hmm. uh, where they could kind of you know communicate across the, the 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 light years or whatever the, the cosmos. Yeah, uh, Ray had a vision that Kylo turns good. Kylo also had a vision that Ray turned evil and it was revealed in the throne room that all of that interaction was enabled by and the, the envision the visions placed in their minds by Snoke. Mm -hmm. It was after Snoke had said that, that Kylo revealed to Ray that I also saw your parents in my vision and your parents are nothing. They were fucking drunk. Nobodies that killed themselves or whatever. They're, they're, they're in a pauper's grave in the desert of Jakku. Uh, that vision that Kylo had, like, I feel like Kylo was telling the truth as he knew it, but it is very clear, 100% clear, non-ambiguous at all from the dialogue that that came from Snoke putting that in his head so it is 100 percent in the air raised parentage um so not only that but i feel like the name of the of episode seven the force awakens directly refers to the force awakening in ray mm-hmm. as you know, ample evidence in the movie itself for that then the second movie is called the last jedi right which On the surface, seems like we're talking about Luke, but Luke very explicitly twice in the movie, in the dialogue, says that he is not the last Jedi. Once almost verbatim said, no, I think it is verbatim said, I am not the last Jedi. Mm -hmm. And just before that was Kylo telling, and this is when Luke was in, you know, he was fighting Kylo, but Mm -hmm. like, you know, kind of projecting himself. Um, Kylo said a bunch of shit about, you know, oh, you're the, you know, you're the last of your kind, blah, 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 blah. And Luke's response to all of that was everything you just said is wrong. And anyway, so Luke is not the last Jedi. So if the title is going to mean something, the last Jedi, and it's not Luke. It kind of has to be either Ray. Well, it either has to be Ray or Kylo, but that's, that's a strange. Kylo is not a Jedi. <laughs> Right. So, <clears throat> um, so if, if the pattern holds true that the titles refer to Ray, then Rise of the, the Rise Skywalker of Skywalker would as refer well. to Ray. So, so I'm holding that, holding on to that theory, but I also had going into episode eight, I also had the theory that Luke is Snoke and I was dead wrong about that. So <laughs> now do you think that Ray is a Skywalker or do you think that it's more, like, do you, do you think her parentage will, well, a better question is, do you think her parentage will be revealed in episode nine? I, yes, uh, I do. Of course. Of course it will. Yeah. Because this is it. This is it. There is no other chance to tell it. This is it. I mean, there's so, plenty of chances to tell it. They could make that as a know, final reveal of, of some other know, anthology movie. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. In a book or a comic book, perhaps, but this is like the, this is it. It's it's going to be revealed. Um, all, so also, so her parentage, so she kind of has to be Luke's daughter if she's going to be a Skywalker. Um, there is a cast member, and I'm looking up right now, so I don't get this wrong. Uh, there is a cast member that is new to the Star Wars saga that I think looks exactly like Ray in episode eight when she was looking into the mirror and trying to like, you know, discover who her parents are like, in, uh, in the cave below the tide. Yep. So the way that like the, the angle of the, of the shot and the way the light was shining on her or whatever, she looked exactly like Carrie Russell. Okay. So you might know her from I think she was Felicity in that old '90s show. I think. 
Um, but anyway, how do you spell Carrie? K E R I. So she is in episode nine, and I think that's probably Ray's mom. So this is who Luke Skywalker got busy with and made a baby. What if it's oh, his? I don't know. About twenty years ago. What if it's his niece? What if it's a tertiary family member? Like it's not directly Luke's child, but maybe it's uh, someone from higher up in the thing. Like uh, you know. Well, there is no one. Uh, so there's Shmi Skywalker mm-hmm. was impregnated through the Force by Palpatine, which made Anakin. He had no biological siblings, and then Luke and Leia were born out of his loins, and that's so, it. So what if Palpatine then, had I, another child? Okay, sure. I suppose that's possible, but... I'm, that just, I'm just feels, asking the question because it's just the kind of shit some corny Hollywood bullshit would pull. But, okay, sure. So he had another child, but it wouldn't be a Skywalker. <clears throat> Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but also Palpatine somehow in this movie because he laughs at the end of the trailer. So yeah, I was going to ask you like, what, what, how, what, what's up with that? Yep, we shall see. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just excited. That's all I know. That's all I'm trying to say. I can't wait. Star Wars. Um, I love Star Wars. Okay, so is this a day one or night before experience for you? Um, well, I mean, Thursday nights are R and P, dude. That's sacred. So it's the night before. It's. A- <laughs> I'm probably like skipping work on Friday to go in the middle of the day. Uh, we may just not stream that night because that might be a thing we have to cover. Yeah, could be. Could I'm be. just just throwing that out there as a eight month ahead of time uh, possibility that we may not be streaming on New Year's <laughs> or on a, a Star Wars release night. Yeah. So <clears throat> anyway, um, all right, dude. Hey, we got some we got some mail. Uh, we do, we do. Uh, Corey writes, and uh, apparently you you wrote, you you whittled, whittled this down a little bit. Yeah, uh, and he he wrote directly to. He was addressing me in the email. Okay, uh, so, so so why don't you read it then, dude? So why don't you why don't you read it? Okay, all right. So um, yeah, so I, I edited it down for brevity, but his words are his. Uh, Corey writes, I downloaded a few of your Ritual Misery episodes and started to check them out. You and your friend Amos sound like you have a good friendship and. Co- camaraderie between each other. Uh, thank you, Corey, first of all, for writing in. Um, much appreciated comments. Uh, yeah, dude, this is recurring um, uh, compliment, I guess, uh, by people that listen to us. Uh, they don't necessarily speak to the quality of our banter, but they say that you guys sound like you like each other. <laughs> <laughs> which, which which is funny because we like each other for about six hours and then we're like, that motherfucker. Yeah, I he, don't talk to you yeah, ever except he, during RMP. <laughs> he smokes too much and then uh and, and you're like, that dude drinks too many sodas. Why we gotta go eat again? And yeah, then it just turns into fuck <laughs> it, we're drunk and we're gonna talk about the old days. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, no, but that's uh, no, that's that's great though, because the reason we started this show was to uh gift our friendship and conversation to the world yeah uh, yeah that's uh, a really good way of saying it. i mean that was the that was the conceit of it but it was really so that that amos and i could um make an excuse to talk each talk to each other on a more regular basis yeah and uh, it's worked pretty well for the last um, uh, for, know, four years for this week's call to action i'm going to insist insist that we get a voicemail five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two Apparently, we haven't used it enough, so Google is trying to take our Google Voice number away, and therefore, if we want to keep our Google Voice number, we need someone to call us and leave us a message. So 567-698-7672. Give us a call. Leave us the stupidest message you can find, or, or just tell us uh, uh, tell us that, uh, that we improved your mood, or at least made you feel good about yourself by being complete jackasses on the internet ourselves. Yes. And yeah, or, or tell us whether or not... Um, uh, Bitch is more offensive than chick dog. Oh my god! If we just get a bunch of calls that are just like bitch, chick dog, bitch, bitch, chick dog, chick dog, bitch, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, and uh, yeah, that would be fucking amazing. It'll take you fucking ten seconds to accomplish that. So please do it, Amos. <laughs> one more time. What's the what's the phone number? Five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. Amazing, dude. If if people want to find me on the internet, 
look up Del Noche or Del Noche 77, you're going to find me. Uh, but if you if you want to follow me on Twitter, which is where I'm at mostly, RM underscore Del Noche. Are you back on Twitter? You're back on the Twitter train? I mean, I'm starting to read it again. Hmm. Uh, I'm back on the Facebook train, but I still don't go there very often. Yeah. What, what, so where would people find you, though? On Twitter. At Ethan yeah, Kane. What? E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. Amazing. All right. And the show? Where's the show at? Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. Hey, hey, don't don't jump ahead. That's that's flavor toothpaste line. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Um, also, we we do have a subreddit that's not used very often. Um, uh, people should go there. It's ritualmisery.reddit.com. Um, or just head over to ritualmisery.com. It's got links to all the things that matter. Yeah, including let's talk about thrones. Hell's yes, we are live every. Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritual misery or diamondclub.tv. Check that place out. That is awesome. But we also want to say thank you very much to Kevin McLeod over at incompetech.com for providing us all of our music. Thanks for listening for Kent for you. For me, this has been your ritual misery podcast. See ya. the button right here diamond club hopes you have enjoyed this program <laughs> r-i-t-u-a-l-m-i-s-e-l-y yay so that was interesting we've never done the closer like that before hello 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 <laughs> i think someone in ohio just tried to call us collect at our voicemail Collect! <laughs> oh, dear God. Now I can't find the button. Where's the button? There's the button. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I fucking love our chat.